Researchers have been waiting for this find for a long time. They came in all shapes and sizes. It would have been hard to distinguish them from dinosaurs. Most species weren't bigger than a mouse. It's like a reminder of a long-gone era when its ancestors walked on all fours. The first mammals to walk the Earth were different from us humans in one important aspect. We walk on two legs. That makes us bipedal. But the first animals that made the transition from sea to land were tetrapods. This means they walked on four legs. The story of these creatures began in present-day Scotland. The region is home to the first terrestrial ecosystem in the world. The rock here is made from silica. This material is the building block of glass. Hot volcanic springs formed these rocks more than 400 million years ago. Such land composition is a treasure trove for paleontologists. These are the scientists who study the fossil remains of animals and plants. In Scotland, they found everything from plants with preserved cells to the oldest known fossils of insects. They even discovered a fungus that grew up to 29 feet tall. But there was one find that stood out from all the other ones. In 2015, scientists unearthed fossils of four-legged animals. The place of discovery was Willie's Hole, near the hillside village of Chernside in the south of the country. Researchers dated the finds to the Paleozoic era, about 360 million years ago. This was the time when the early ancestors of the dinosaurs thrived. The world was a much different place back then. Today, we associate Scotland with cold and rain, and kilts and golf. But at that time, this land sat closer to the equator. It had lush vegetation, and its climate was hot and humid. Droughts and flooding were quite common. It was the perfect setting for an important evolutionary event. Researchers have been waiting for this find for a long time. The fossil records had a 15-million-year gap. Its name was Romer's Gap, after the Harvard professor who described it. Science was missing fossil evidence of the animals that ventured onto land on all fours. The five fossil species they found in Scotland shed light on this mystery. The first tetrapods were divided into two large groups. One of them contained the ancestors of birds, reptiles, and mammals. Their collective name is Amniotis. The other included the ancestors of amphibians, such as frogs. When these and similar species migrated to dry land, they discovered that they weren't alone. The earliest life forms that made this evolutionary leap were liverwort-like plants. We know this because scientists found their spores. They also discovered fossilized remains of an air-breathing millipede. It had tiny holes that allowed it to breathe air. This puts it among the first oxygen-breathing animals on the planet. And this species of millipedes is the first land-dweller in the animal kingdom. Today, the largest of such creatures is the African elephant. Scientists believe that one of the first four-legged creatures to make it onto land was an amphibian ancestor. Its name was Istiostega. The first part of the animal's name translates from Ancient Greek as fish. This reveals a lot about the way the creature moved. It dragged itself on the ground using only its front limbs that resembled fins. This is the way that mudskipper fish move on land today. This isn't how we imagine proper walking. But during the period our hero lived on Earth, it was the perfect way to get around. The climate had both extremely dry and wet periods. The ability to walk and swim at the same time was especially useful. The fossils from Scotland supported this claim. The fish-like animals scientists found had four slender limbs. This is the perfect equipment for life on land, not inside the ocean. There was further evidence. The fossils displayed well-developed lungs for breathing outside of water. But their legs were still too weak to completely lift the body off the ground. The tail section had to slither along the surface, similar to how a snake moves forward. This animal that resembled a modern-day salamander lived during the Paleozoic era. This was the time when four-legged creatures developed a standard number of digits at the end of their hands and feet, five on each. We know them today as fingers. All species that had more than five fingers started slowly disappearing. These pteropods split into two groups. The first of them had to return to the sea to lay eggs. This group would later give rise to amphibians. 
The second kind of tetrapods is more interesting to human evolution. They're considered the ancestors of reptiles, dinosaurs, and mammals. The Permian period came at the end of the Paleozoic. By this time, all life forms on Earth inhabited the supercontinent of Pangaea. There were vast deserts far away from the oceans. The more important species that walked on all fours during this time were the synapsids. They came in all shapes and sizes. But the only subgroup of synapsids to survive into the Cenozoic were the mammals. Doesn't seem like much, but we exist today thanks to these ancient tetrapods. As a species, we have come far in the tree of life. A recent study revealed that the first life form to evolve was an ocean-drifting comb jelly. This came as a bit of a surprise. For a long time, researchers believed that the simple sponge was the oldest animal on the planet. After analyzing vast amounts of data, comb jelly came on top. Or the bottom, depending on how you look at the tree of life. These ancient beings were squishy and had tentacles, but they weren't the true jellyfish like the ones we see today. The creatures lacked the bell-shaped body and stinging cells. Scientists cannot precisely date the species because they lack a fossil of the oldest comb jelly. This is not the case with other ancient creatures that once roamed our planet. The ancestor of dinosaurs, turtles, and crocodiles are familiar to science. These are the animals that appeared during the Paleozoic era. This was a time when true tetrapods appeared. Paleontologists recognized them by two distinctive openings on each side of their skull. The first mammals that appeared during this era resembled reptiles. It would have been hard to distinguish them from dinosaurs. Some of them later evolved features we all know today. These include fur and a warm-blooded metabolism. They developed during the time when dinosaurs dominated Earth. That's why these first true mammals were small. Most species weren't bigger than a mouse. Their diet consisted of plants, as they were herbivores. Also, they were creatures of the night. During the day, they were mostly hiding underground. Now this wasn't such a bad strategy. Some 66 million years ago, an asteroid fell on the Yucatan Peninsula in today's Mexico. And this spelled the end for dinosaurs. 75% of all species that lived on Earth at the time disappeared. The mammal's small size helped them survive and repopulate the planet. The era in the history of our planet that followed the Mesozoic was nicknamed the Age of the Mammals. The climate became warmer, so grasslands expanded. These were the ideal conditions for tetrapods to grow in size. Some mammals decided not to take this evolutionary path. Bats remained relatively small in size and took to the skies to join birds. And there are some tetrapods that return to the ocean. The most notable example are whales. Today, their closest living relatives are hippos. Both species are aquatic, but they develop this trait separately. The first whales were actually tetrapods. These were the most typical examples of four-legged land animals. If you saw them today, you would think they were oversized rats. That's what whales looked like some 50 million years ago. Paleontologists came to this conclusion in the 1980s by studying the skull of a now extinct animal. It lived around the edge of a large, shallow ocean. At some point in history, it returned to the marine way of life. Its back legs devolved. But sometimes, biologists stumble upon a living specimen of a whale that still displays tiny hind limbs in its skeleton. It's like a reminder of a long-gone era when its ancestors walked on all fours. 